welcome everybody to another episode of the mustard seed faith podcast we're here with episode five already we're five episodes in and who would have known i would have been doing this in this pandemic and we've gotten this far so thank you so much for listening and tuning into this episode i'm so glad that you're here with us and another interesting topic for you today but before we get into that guys you know we're just out here trying to help people do better and in order to do better you know you have to be a better person and sometimes you just can't be better if you don't know any better right like we just gotta know sometimes our foolishness is from our ignorance it's time to be better guys it's time to do better and it's time to know better so this week the sermon that I'm highlighting for the segment, that's a good word, is from a pastor. His name is Tim Ross, and I found him on YouTube, and he gave a sermon that really helped me with even doing this episode or doing this, this podcast, and it's called Please God, Not People. And he talks about how we can sacrifice our calling and what we're created to do just to have a title. And he encourages us to never stop producing and doing what you were called to do just to please other people. Come on, somebody. Can I have an amen? Because it can be hard living this life of faith and then because you're a Christian, you're expected to please everybody while you're walking in your calling but sometimes that's just not the case sometimes what you're called to do is meant to upset some people so yeah that's a good word pastor tim ross please god not people so the topic for today is the grass is greener on this side and what sparked this idea for this topic was i was just thinking like what am i gonna talk about next and i felt like this is what i wanted to talk about so i want to address some of the issues that are keeping people back from giving their life to god and one of the first ones that i want to talk about is sinning is just plain fun and i was in that trap sinning can be fun but sinning does not produce the real joy real joy only comes from the lord it's one of the fruits of the spirit you think you're having fun and you think you're happy but it's just a trick that the enemy is playing on you like i used to think i was having fun going out and partying and then I realized that's like the next day I'm tired. I don't want to get up. And I'm just like, it, this sucks now. Like, what now? And you have to keep doing that again and again to get that real buzz. And another thing with sin, though, is it separates us from God. It just brings us further and further away from knowing Him and like hearing His voice and that kind of stuff this is also one that's pretty um i understand a lot because growing up i didn't have much examples of what being a christian and a young christian looks like and still being able to have fun so now though i've realized that certain things yeah they could be fun in the moment but they bring more damage to me afterwards so becoming a christian i realized that this scripture has actually happened in my life where it says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect now the key to that is you have to submit to the word of god it's like you have to allow it to read you as you read it and then go from there so that's something that's definitely happened to me um as i became a christian and another thing is i realized i can still have fun like i still like to dance and stuff but you're not gonna see that like that's for me and another thing is like i still like to listen to music but i just limit how much i intake of secular music i still like to 
go to the movies instead of like going on a night out or I don't know just have conversation with people instead of talking about things that aren't adding any value to my life like that type of stuff I realize oh my gosh it doesn't seem fun to you but it's fun to me it's what feeds my soul and while sinning is fun and even as a Christian now doesn't mean that I stop sinning this is why I still need the grace of God I still need to ask for forgiveness because it's still hard yeah it's still hard and I need to rely daily on the Holy Spirit to help me with this sin battle sometimes some battles are easier to win some of them are actually a real struggle so yeah first one is sinning is fun the next issue that I noticed is people believe that they have time before they have to give their life over to God so it's like oh I'm young that's for old people I'm gonna wait till I'm 30 40 50 get all my junk my fun out of the way and then I'm gonna give my life over to God and that's actually the biggest lie if you continue to live your life a certain way building bad habits along the way it becomes harder to break those bad habits when you finally decide to give your life over to God so what I've seen and I've um, seen happen to a lot of people is well, especially in that same men they go their whole life sleeping with multiple women and decide oh I'm gonna settle down when in reality it's hard to settle down at that point because you've already trained your body to experiencing multiple women and then when you're forced to forced to be with one woman for the rest of your life it just becomes so hard and you have to rely on God even more and in some cases men just aren't able to do it on the other hand for women it's like it can be the same thing we train our bodies to be with multiple men and then when you're meant to be with one man it's hard you start to want other men so that's just a real scenario that's actually happening in the world today now if you are a bit older and you you're still new to this um, faith thing there's still a chance God is still a healer he's still able to to heal you from your baggage but for those who are at my age and younger, I would advise you to get on board with this as quickly as you can so that you don't have as much trauma and baggage to deal with when you come into knowing Christ, when you become that new creation. Because even, yes, it says we are new creations when we give our life over to Christ, but there's still old baggage that's attached to us that, that needs to be dealt with as well. The next one that's a big issue is Christianity does not seem cool and it seems more like a set of rules that we have to follow and there's just things that we just can't do when we in reality yes there are things that we can't do but it comes from a place of us knowing we have a choice now I can choose not to do it because I just don't want to do it. Another thing that I've realized is just my desires have just changed. Certain things that I found fun, I don't enjoy anymore. And another issue is that sometimes as young people, we just tend to believe, not even just as young people, but as people, we tend to believe we know what's best for ourselves. Like, you can't tell me nothing, nobody can tell me nothing. I'ma do me, you do you, and mind your business. But, sometimes we just don't know what's best for ourselves. And sometimes we need to listen to other people trying to lead us and trying to direct us. And just try to give us plain old wisdom, guys. In Proverbs 1, verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despised wisdom and instruction. That's Bible for you guys. That wasn't my own words. I'm sorry if you're offended, but that's what the Bible says, okay? So, and another one, James 1 verse 22 says, But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. So you're thinking, oh, I'm do, I'm a do me. I know what's best for me. And it's just like, you're fooling yourself here, guys. Like, come on, get with the program. Right, so on to the next one. This final issue that I've experienced 
unfortunately, but it is what it is, is that church is boring. So there's two sides to this, and I'm gonna try to be as gentle with what I'm saying, and I hope you hear my heart in it. But yes, there's two sides of it. There's the individual side of it, me as a person and how I feel about church. And then there's the other side of, is the church actually doing enough to reach those who are not interested in God at all? So on a personal side of it, we have to evaluate ourselves to see if, is it actually the church or is it just me? Am I going out on a Saturday night and church starts at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. on Sunday and I'm tired, I'm hungover, so of course I'm not going to be able to stay awake in church. And of course, of course I'm not going to be able to engage in what the preacher is saying. So it's like you have to evaluate yourself. Are you prepared to go into church and actually receive what is being given in the church, receive the word that is being given in the church? Are you trying to be involved in church? Are you trying to make a difference in your church? Do you see issues in your church that you want to help with and you feel like you have something to contribute to? That's what I mean. Like, we have to do our job and realize you have to sit back and think about it. Am I being fed at this church? If the answer is no, find another one. Every church isn't for everybody. and not saying that they're the bad church. They're just not giving you what you need. Therefore, you have to do your own work and search out for the church that's going to feed you. Search out the church that's going to keep you interested. Now, on the other side of it is the church. Is the church actually doing enough? I do feel like some churches have missed an entire generation because of their unwillingness to do things that will capture their attention because it might be seen as ungodly. But what I think is ungodly is missing out on a whole generation. So that's the five things that I've noticed um, that are keeping people away from giving their life over to God. One, they think that sitting is fun. Two, they believe the lie that there's enough time before I can give my life over to God. Three, Christianity doesn't seem cool. Four, we believe that we know what's best for us when we really don't and we need to seek out God's wisdom. And five, church is boring. Basically what I'm trying to say is the grass is greener on this side, guys. Like all these things are like tricks of the enemy and you're, you have to realize like he wants you to think the grass is greener on his side when it's actually greener on God's side. So on to the segment of flesh versus spirit. So this week, I'm going to call it one foot in, one foot out. So for me, it used to be like, oh, I'm going to have my one foot in the world and my next foot in the things of God. So my one foot in the world would be like, oh, I'm going to still go out, party, do what I want to do. But I'm going to go to church. You know, I'm going I'm to praise God. I'm going to worship here and there. But then, you know, here comes that C word, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It would just be like, why are you here? So Nadia, like, you know, you're not supposed to be here. Like, go home. Like, you know, when that um, sister, sister, when they used to say, go home, Roger, it used to be in my head. Go home, Sonadia. So as I got closer to God, it started, I started being pulled out of the world, even though my flesh still wanted me to be in the world. It was being, it was becoming harder to, to just ignore it. So I just had to give in to the spirit, you know, just let the spirit do what he wanted to do. And it was the better decision in the end anyway, because the spirit of God knows better and he's trying to lead me into a better life and a new path in life. And of course your flesh is out here just trying to keep you down, trying to hold you back, trying to stop you from being who God has called you to be when you know who you're supposed to be, you know, just being led by the spirit. So yeah, my flesh used to tell me it's not that serious. Like you can still go out and party and like do what you gotta do. And yeah, that was a lie. Big fat lie. So I had a choice to make. God or my flesh, the spirit on my flesh. And I had to choose to priori prioritize my relationship with God and the desire to go clubbing left. Like it still wants to creep up here and there and then, and then immediately I'm just like, you know, you're not even going to have fun. 
you just want to go home anyway when you're out so yeah that's flash versus spirit end of episode five i almost said four like i forgot a whole episode but the end of episode five thanks for listening guys i hope you enjoyed it see you for the next one or like hear me for the next one whatever you're listening on or if you're viewing this like share and subscribe to my channel i'm a bit hyped today i don't know why i think it's because i i don't know the joy of the lord is in my spirit today so yeah anyway guys love you be blessed i'm praying be you and yeah peace